Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I wanted to talk about um, feminism, mostly my take on it and, and the way that it works because obviously I've, I've recently touched on the topic of like feminism versus anti-feminism in a, a couple of videos, mostly in regards to comments made by Lacey Green and in regards to a couple of other articles and things over the last few months or whatever, um, you know, the, the various um, actions that have been taken against people who have either spoken out against the kind of um, extreme left's version of social justice or in regards to like very active no platforming and stuff like that. Either way, you know, I've had people ask me kind of where I stand on the whole thing and as a result I thought I'd, I'd actually come and bring this to you guys as a, a thing to talk about. Um, ultimately, the way I want to take a look at this is I'll take a look at where I feel the whole modern kind of feminist movement kind of sits um, in, in again, my perception. Um, and then I'll go on and discuss a couple of the, the big things that usually seem to fuel the whole uh, modern feminist thing. And I might touch on a couple of other things as we go because, you know me, I tend to, to ramble and just kind of look at the the kind of notes that I've got but otherwise I just spin stuff off so to get into it you know feminism was a very important thing from from when you go back to to the initial uh, kind of parts of it with suffrage where you were granting land rights and the the capacity for a woman to vote and all of those kind of things you know th that was very important way back when because as much as um, the the kind of social s kind of sphere of the world, the, the way that, th that societies were starting to work together, the fact that we were moving towards a more modern time was um, all in flux and you had an awful lot of kind of conquest and colonization and moving to other parts of the world that had barely been touched before and all of those kind of things at that point. Um, it, it was it was very much a kind of time of change and it was a time of change where you had gone from societies that were like vastly in the past like thousands and thousands of years where there were more levels of kind of women being allowed power and women women being allowed control in various ways you know the various um, female queens of Egypt who were just left to rule because why not um, and things like that. But then as you kind of progressed forward, um, there was a lot more focus on control and one of the ways that you could easily control people was through religion and so on and so forth. And as a result, you had at times very, very puritanical slants. But then also a lot of the kind of focus on um, like maybe women being property or women being um, lesser than men came down to the things that were changing the world at the time, which were usually things like warfare and conquest, which on average, again, for the most part, women don't take part in as often, simply because they aren't as physically powerful as men. They don't have the same attacking instincts uh, as a man would in, in certain situations. And so moving forward to the, the beginning of, of kind of the time when kind of war was granted you had a couple of big ones on the way but for the most part war was kind of slowing down in terms of small wars here there and everywhere it was kind of becoming one one big war here or one big war there and it was all around kind of shifting uh, shifting politics rather than just uh, kind of tribe on tribe or whatever else and so you you had all of that kind of thing consolidating people for example in the UK um, at, at that period were maybe you know that you had the big class divide still sure but at the same time the people who were living in this country were actually starting to see kind of the development thanks to the industrial reg rev uh, revolution and seeing that kind of development and as a result you had a lot more women who were becoming more educated and, and being left with an awful lot more in the way of resources at their disposal but at times they weren't allowed access to them or they weren't allowed a say in the grander running of the country even if they themselves were a prominent business owner or had inherited a large amount of, of wealth or some important thing from someone else or you know whatever the, the the state was they were 
having issues with the fact that they were being left with these things that they could use but then also they couldn't they weren't then allowed to use them so for, like that first wave of feminism the suffrage and, and all that kind of thing was important it made a, a big social change they had a thing that they wanted and they went and got it that was fine there was an awful lot of talk of moral upset and all that kind of thing but at the same time anyone who makes a purely moral argument doesn't have an argument at all and so as a result you know first wave of feminism and the, and the beginning of, of that and its prog progress into the, the kind of modern times all well and good the second wave or what's more what's commonly referred to as the second wave of feminism where you had um, kind of the, during the, the 60s and 70s the um, the bra burning and the the women wanting um, equality in the workplace equality of opportunity all those kind of things again Granted, that may very well be where we see a lot of the seeds of some of the more extreme kind of left-wing approaches to things now, but at the same time, they did an awful lot of good work. You had an awful lot of equality um, like legisla uh, legislation passed in that time. And as a result of that, though, you know, you've, you've got um, both things like your, your gender and your... your um, your race and all of those other things were, were made protected qualities during that kind of period yeah and as a result now again i say that yes the 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 goods the good points the things that were successful from that where they had an objective they wanted um equality of opportunity and equality of these things written into law so that they were protected and they got it goal achievement done yeah um, in which case, I applaud that, and and anyone that espouses to that, or anyone who was part of that movement, like uh, members of Christina Hoff, uh, members of Christina Hoff Summers, members like Christina Hoff Summers and Camille P uh, Paglia, and and others like them who are now often being uh, criticised for their very reasoned stance on things. You know, th those people, you know, well done to them. They had a, a, a goal that they went out. They achieved and it's now to this day a uh, in legislation it's protected qualities it's it's all of that kind of thing now though you jump forward to today and you get an awful lot more of of the kind of internet variety of angry kind of social justice warrior kind of levels of, of stuff which tends to to revolve around the ideology of feminism and and it, feminism seems to be that starting point because it's something that everyone can agree with to one extent or another and everyone is already behind because it's already the law of the land in most of the places you know most of the places that we're seeing these swells of people who are making these arguments and having these upsets tend to be um, from the Western world, places like uh, the United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, you know, they're, they're very much more Western kind of um, societies and countries and they're coming out with these these big issues. And I'm not saying that, that again, that some of the issues that they're raising aren't important, but it's the, the core has become, has gone from a goal to success approach to very much an ideological one where it's it's very much more us versus them there's much more aggression involved there's much more upset self-righteousness isolation um, bullying to a greater or lesser extent uh, all in the all, all under the guise of the ones who are doing the bullying are the ones who are oppressed and that again doesn't make any sense considering the people where they are making these arguments tend to be in countries that are purely in law written black and white these are your protected qualities these are the things that you cannot be discriminated against um, and if you are then you can ha report those things to people if you have evidence of it if you have proof of it if you can demonstrate how you were you were kind of taken on or dropped because of your uh, your race or gender or whatever else then you can take that to the authorities and have it dealt with Obviously, there's a lot of positive discrimination as well as a result of people overcompensating because they are worried about these things. But that stuff never gets reported because, of course, why would it? The stuff that only gets reported is when it's negative, And that's the thing. When those negatives happen, people are often too scared to go and report, which is why then it's easier for them to go and create a lot more noise. 
than just go and do the effective thing. And I've got issues with other things about in that kind of sphere, but I'll touch on those in other videos um, as well later on down the line. But there are two core things that I always come back to in regards to um, feminism. So firstly, just to clarify and summarise what I've just said, it was and, and continues to be in, in um, a historical sense a very important movement, both at the very beginning and at the second point where it, where it arose, where it was uh, all about achieving equality in terms of political power, voting, ownership and, and opportunities for jobs and pay, stuff like that. Yeah, And now, again, after working in um, kind of corporate environments or business environments, you don't get disparity between genders because do you know how much effort and how much money and how much time would be wasted if you had to draft a different contract for two genders? It's so much easier to just go, this is it for this number of hours for this position. There you go, that's it done. Yeah, and that's all they do. Because why? otherwise, again, why would you waste so much time and money? I'm not even talking about going, oh, well, if women are cheaper, why, aren't they, why wouldn't they employ them more? Because that again has that as an argument is is semi valid, but also it doesn't make as much sense as others. But also the legal costs in continuing to refer back and draft numerous versions instead of just one for each job description. You know, it, it would take so much more time and money, which companies are loath to to kind of throw around without need. And so as a result, if we're talking about um, representation of, of women's issues, fine. But then it, you also have to accept the representation of men's issues, which, considering that we in the UK have uh, at least one politician who has directly laughed at the the male suicide statistics, um, on a, on a, a security panel, no less, um, or it, it, it's a case of you can't like take one and go this representation is fine but this representation isn't and this is why the term red pilling has become so popular and why the movie um the the kind of docu movie that, that has come out recently um has been so popular because it's a demonstration of a person who wants to espouse for female equality and was on that side of things and then actually ventured out, had the conversations, saw what the world was like. And it comes down to this. People want to represent what they know. Yeah. So if you've got a woman who's having issues and you've got a man who's having issues, they both want to to kind of put those issues out there so that there may be a solution can be found. Unfortunately, you've also got to acknowledge that there are assholes on all sides of everything. And so as a result, the people who usually shout the loudest and who ruin everything are the people who make who are just assholes they cause problems more so than they do anything else and so this is where you know the this the the modern era of feminism kind of i don't feel personally is necessary because we have already achieved in law in legislation in the parts of the world where these arguments are happening more so than anywhere else we have achieved in black and white the the legislative protections of those things yeah the the goal has been achieved now for a very long time now if you were talking about feminism being taken and exported to other places in the world where women are still actively oppressed then sure fine i would be behind that but if so so i feel that the feminist movement is no longer required because their goals their goals have been achieved i can't speak today i'm sorry um, but their goals have been achieved the same way that I don't feel UKIP is particularly useful in this country anymore, considering that their their main set of directives, their main set of goals have been achieved as a result of the Brexit referendum. Um, and so there's that. But then you have to separate out the, the kind of representation of women's issues and all the representation of the men's issues, issues of people. Yeah that are affected in, in specific demographics and having them brought forward. Now, that I'm completely fine with, but again, it has to be equal and it has to be an open dialogue between both sides of of any, any set of issues or treating each as separate demographics as they should be treated. 
So it's not us versus them, it's we're all just people and they're all talking to the, the authority on whatever issue it is and they are bringing those issues to the fore and they are both having them addressed. And then they can work together to make sure that all of their issues are addressed in a timely fashion in a very egalitarian way. You know, because that makes more sense in a world that has already started to secure those rights for the majority of people within the places where people are complaining the most. So there's that. But then there are two big things that always come up in regards to this. And one is patriarchy. And it always gets brought up. And I have to to try and just put this down for a second. Because the, the whole idea of patriarchy, patriarchy is a system of governance the same way that a, a, a hierarchy or a, a, um, a democracy or a matriarchy or a, a communist dictatorship or whatever are all forms of governance. In which case, now if we take a look at, um, for example, America, where there are an awful lot of people who cry patriarchy for no reason, um, you look at that and firstly it's not a patriarchy because they are a representative democracy. Could their democracy be more representative and more democratic? Of course it could. So could ours. So could most of the democracies, so-called democracies around the planet. But the thing is it's not patriarchal. There may be people within that country that have patriarchal views. There may be people, especially of older generations, who are very patriarchal in the way that they manage their families. However, and there, there may be very patriarchal people who try and impress their beliefs on other people, the same way that there are incredibly female supremacist um, individuals who press their, their opinions on others, or incredibly Christian people who impress the, uh, kind of impose themselves on other people. You know, it, it, there, there are always going to be people who take it to an unnecessary extreme that whereby they are literally attacking other people with whatever ideological stick that they have picked up so far. But overall, the country, the, pe the place where those people are, is not patriarchal because the system of government is de democratic. Women have the vote there. They have protected qualities. Yeah, they have equality of opportunity. Uh, hiring in the especially in the workforce um, in a grand scheme should and tends to be quite meritocratic whereby the best person who gets the job in theory has some way of backing up why they've got the job now I realize that doesn't always happen and sometimes it just comes down to the best of a bad bunch or the person who's been there longest or whatever but again for the most part you know a company would, uh, looking for new employees is going to take the best of whatever batch that they have. Whoever stands out as in the top like two or three are the people that they are going to look to hire more so than the people who are in the top two or three, regardless of their race, their gender, their sexuality, whatever. They are more likely to take the person that is going to be the best worker, the person who is going to have the most skills or qualities that they are looking for. Yeah, in which case that meritocratic system is where it should be. And this is again where I, I addressed when I was talking about the manifestos in my month in review for the UK um, election. You know, we we don't need where where you've got um, on at least two of the manifestos that they wanted forty percent of of um, kind of board of director individuals to be female. We don't need that. It should purely be the case of the best person for the job gets the job. Yeah, a move towards a, a more meritocratic system is a move towards a fairer system that encourages hard work, innovation, um, and, and all of those good things that make both companies and countries stronger. You know, stuff like that. And considering that, especially in this country, the UK is now at the bottom of all of the countries that are in the G7 summit in terms of economic growth and, and so on, um, yeah, we, we could do with some more of that instead of trying to impose things that are not meritocratic and don't really make a lot of sense. Um, but as a result, the, the whole patriarchy thing, people within that country, people within that society holding some of those views, they're entirely free to do so the same way that you are entirely free to hold whatever views that you have be they religious or, or be they political or be they whatever, you can you can completely take whatever approach to things that you want. And that's the important thing. They can do the same. Yeah. But it's when it gets to 
harming other people. Well, then if it's harming other people, then that's potentially against the law and, and they can be be kind of taken to court or imprisoned for it, depending on how exactly they have gone to harm people with it. But as long as you don't have like the head of the country and the government as a whole taking action that is that is like purely patriarchal, purely shutting women down, preventing them from voting, preventing them from from um, owning land or whatever else, you know, uh, don't get me wrong, there are still sexist attitudes and there are still problems in various places around the world, but they are not as big an issue as is being stated, and especially as, as in regards to the whole patriarchy view, if there was one, there were there would be kind of no real issue around things like uh, the fact that an awfully large percentage of the people who live on the streets tend to be male, or that the male suicide rate is so high, because if, if the male suicide, um, if the people committing suicide were kept as well as is being suggested, and that they have a level of privilege and security that the um, is allowed to them by the system of governance and control that allows more for them than for others, then you know why are they why are they killing themselves? Why aren't they getting the help they need? You know, it's it's um, ignoring the positives that the a movement has. Um, you know, female privileges in regards to being um, people being more attentive in regards to their care. People setting up an awful lot more in the way of things like shelters and charities and things like that to help with them uh, and their issues, as opposed to their kind of equivalent on the other side of the whole. Uh, the whole gender thing and so you know there's there's that patriarchy it doesn't exist in these places there are places that are still theocratic um patriarchies or actual patriarchies um that are causing harm and really you know kind of suppressing and oppressing people but they're doing it not just to women they're doing it to swathes of people including atheists homosexuals whatever and so those are places that, that maybe need these things importing or or targeting or whatever else to help those people who are in trouble, who are being oppressed and, and, and suppressed. But at the same time, doing making the noise in countries where this isn't an issue anymore about that country, it, it's counterproductive because it, it, it takes all of the energy and focuses it inward on that country, on those people, and they faff and they throw things all over the place and they make nonsensical kind of um, decisions like the whole 40% of female directors for no reason thing you know and as a result it's a case of well fine let's let's take a look at maybe the bigger international situation with these issues that you are raising instead of purely trying to to work on a country that has already worked on them and succeeded not perfectly mind you but in working with other places, you can then take things that work and maybe re-attribute re them back. You know, you can you can make that work if it's really that big a problem, you know, still. Um, which, again, a lot of these things aren't because suggesting patriarchy, a system of government, is in place in somewhere like the UK when we've got a female prime minister and we've got many, many female uh, members of parliament, maybe not as many as men, but then again, you have to look at the, the pool of people that actually put themselves forward for those jobs. Again, it's meritocratic. The person who has put themselves forward, who's been put into the position, uh, for whatever reason, be they elected, be they hired, you know, that's that's the the point, right? You've got the best, in theory, best person for the job doing the job. Now, the other thing that I want to raise is the gender pay gap, because I've, I talked about this a, a, a fair while ago in regards to, in a much broader spectrum of things. Um, but first off, there are a few things that we need to understand. First off, there are pay gaps all over the place. You you just need to look and you see pay gaps. Um, mostly because as much as everyone might be on the same contract if they're for doing the same job, um, within the same pay bracket and so on, everyone does a little bit extra or a little bit less. Everyone does the same number of, of different things that bring that pay up and down. For example, within my... Uh, one of my previous jobs, I was the highest earning person in the entire place. Why? Simply because of the amount of overtime I did. At times I was working 60 hour weeks. I was not getting weekends. I was having to close one day and come in the next day first thing in the morning to then 
open up again. And this was like at 5 a.m. You know, so it would be me jumping between different places in in over a very short period of time, um, which, again, at times was technically illegal. At times it was absolutely fine, but it still came down to me working an awfully large amount of time compared to a lot of the other people that I was working with at that moment. In which case, I was again left, and they, if, if someone had looked at all of the payrolls, they would have seen that I, compared to the, the other members of the team, not just the female member of our team, but the other male members of our team as well, I was, whilst on the same contract as they were, still earning a large amount more because the the amount of time that I was being paid for antisocial hours was quite high because I was doing the stupid o'clock in the morning shifts or because I was just doing extra hours. I was staying on to make sure that stuff was done. I was covering sickness. I was covering holiday. I was doing whatever. And so as a result, that's I was always there. I was basically living in the place. And it basically meant that, yeah, I, I was the one winning on that. I was the one who had the, the largest paycheck from that particular job. And there would be a pay gap if you looked at that on a team. Now, when you actually look at the things that people make arguments on for the, the, the gender pay gap, a lot of it is taken from statistics that are very wishy-washy because it either tends to be the mean, i.e. Uh, a complete sum and division of all of the, of all of the, the, the kind of pay within a, a company or within um, a nation even, and then just going, okay, so we've got the average female and we've got the average male, and the male one tends to be higher. Fine. Okay, fair enough. But then what are the reasons for that? Well, first off, let's just look at the maths, because the maths is part of the problem here. Because just taking a flat mean average of the entire population, you know, you're going to have people there that are skewing it one way or the other because you've got people who are earning a huge amount, people who aren't earning anything people who are doing all kinds of things with their lives that then impact their earning. And so as a result, taking the mean is firstly a pretty poor kind of level of this in the first place. But also it means that, yeah, do you have on average, yeah, as part of the general population, more stay-at-home mums than you do stay-at-home dads? Yes. Do you have more women who are more focused on family and children and kind of um, uh, being having more flexibility in time uh, in their their time that they're working, yeah, you do. Do you have more men that are killing themselves at work, not because they need to, but just because it's there and it's a thing to attack and it's a thing to do and they do it? Yes, you do. And the the statistics on um, kind of workplace illness and stress also reflect that with a huge number of the men in top positions in companies also suffering from a huge number of heart conditions and stress-related illnesses. You know, and so they might be earning more and they might be be um, better off in, in various other ways thanks to whatever it is that they do, but at the same time, they're working long, uh, at long periods. They have worked for an extended period throughout their life to get to that point. And then they are making themselves literally sick with the amount of stress and the amount of other things that they are having to do to get that paycheck. And so as a result, you have these various um, things there just on just on the basic average that is usually quoted um, on that mean average that the, the problem kind of arises. Now, then you've got the, the middle income kind of average, the median, where they're, they're taking, literally, they're just lining people up and they're going, that one's in the middle, cool. Now, there's a problem with that. I've talked about this before. The biggest problem with the, the median is the fact that it is lazy. It is so, and it's incredibly inaccurate. So if you had someone, if you lined people up relative to height, yeah? And so you had the... Um, the, the people who are like five foot four at uh, one end, all the people, and they line up and it's a really big line because for some reason everyone in this room is five foot four, exactly. And then you had the person who was five foot nine in the middle, and there's only one of them, and then there were two people who were six foot three, and they were stood at this end, yeah? In which case, the median would be the person in the middle. It'd be that one individual who was five foot nine, eight, whatever I just said. Yeah, even though the majority of the people there would have been 
the the five foot four short asses, yeah. And so as a result, you know, the median doesn't re give you a particularly representative I representative idea of kind of where people actually lie in this in kind of what they're getting or what they have. And so then when you're looking at people talking about the middle income, the median income for these these arguments on the gender pay gap, then unfortunately you're kind of stuck looking at it going, well, yeah, but this doesn't tell me how many people are in this. You're saying you're saying that that the median income for women is this and the median income for men is this and it's slightly higher for men than it is for women or whatever. And it's like it's all very well and good, but how many people are actually in that bracket? What are the brackets here? How are you breaking this down? Because just comparing two numbers to one another without anything causal, without seeing where it's coming from or how it's working, it basically becomes a kind of pointless exercise. And now this is where I'm, I try to look at the modal incomes when I'm looking at these things. And the modal income will literally go which one is the most frequent. It will put people into brackets and it will go, there are more people in this bracket than there are in this bracket. And as a result, this one is the most often occurring. Yeah. And so if this is the thing, if you take all of the, the men and women in the country and looked at their modal income, how many, you know, the men and women who are all in, in the same brackets, which one turns up the most? I can almost guarantee you that, yes, the male bracket would have a higher income, the most frequently occurring male kind of bracket or male income, male salary would probably still be higher than the female one. But then you can do something else interesting with the modal income. You can see if everyone within that bracket, male and female, is still turning up in the same kind of places. You can just go, okay, so over the whole country, where do these brackets lie? Do we have the most men and women, most people generally, in one place or another? And I can, and, and you're probably going to find that in that case, most people are earning between like fifteen and seventeen thousand pounds a year. You know, it's, there's, you're not doing particularly well off that. You're not developing much farther beyond that, just simply because the the people are all being paid for the same job, and they're all being paid the same for the same job, unless things have been added. Yeah, if you're doing the same job as someone else, but you're working on commission and you do really well, and they don't, then you get dumped a whole load of a whole load more money, and essentially, therefore, you're getting paid more. But also on your your contracts, you're actually being paid fairly for what you have signed on for. You know, the the again, these things have been written in law for a long time now, and you, if you go against them, you can get fucked for it, and so. The, the gender pay gap and all that kind of thing is it literally makes no sense. It's it's a nonsense. Because the the things that stand out about it, yeah, are the if you're looking at the right numbers, if you are if you are analysing it in the correct way, you can see why those numbers are slanted in one direction or the other. You can see that all of the people who are contracted to do a job, be they male or female, if they are doing a barista job at fucking Starbucks or something then they are going to get paid the same yeah if they are literally the same level of regional manager for some multinational then as long as they have the same contract then they are going to be paid the same because they cannot be paid otherwise they are not you know that would be not only breaking the law but it would also be picked up pretty quickly if someone was being paid more than someone else i'm pretty sure because as much as i've been part of companies before that have gone like you're not supposed to discuss your uh, paycheck with with other people it happens anyway you know you go into everyone gets their their pay slip at the end of the day especially at the, the lower levels of, of businesses and things they, they they finish their day they open up their paycheck they take a look and see how much they've got they go oh wow this month's been a good month for me or the other person's gone oh wow this was a shit month for me and then potentially it's that you'll have people like a number of times that i when i was um kind of a junior manager or manager level and i would have people coming to me and asking me about their pay slips asking me about what they had got that month and seeing if it kind of added up if it made sense if there was something amiss because they thought that they had done more or hadn't done as much 
And so, yeah, we would end up talking about it, whether the, there were controls in place or not. You was you would have people who were confused or who didn't know and who who needed clarity on things. And so, yeah, guess what? We were there to make sure that they understood it so that they didn't kick up a fuss. Either it was a case of, yeah, you've been paid the same as absolutely everybody else, but you've not had your money come through because of when you joined the company, because you've been emergency taxed, because whatever else. Or it was, yeah, you, pay, you got paid some extra this month because we achieved our, our monthly target and everyone got a small bonus. Or because, um, oh yeah, that would be those two shifts that you did on the morning with me, and so you got paid antisocial hours, so you got an extra, like, extra time and a quarter on those two hours, and so you got paid a little more, and so it's turned up here. Yeah, and that would be it. It would be simple, it'd be easy. And again, going through numerous different companies that tend to be quite big companies, you know, you don't see this, because again, the whole having to waste time and money on different contracts based on something as daft as gender, which is not only illegal, but also costly and time, like, count completely counterproductive in terms of time management. You know, you, you just don't bother. You know, again, the, if there's one group of people who do the kind of things that I talked about, talk about a lot, where it's like, waste less energy, do less, I'm asking you to expend less energy, you know, it tends to be companies because they are the people who have that real understanding of time as money, money as time, energy being wrapped in there somewhere and it all basically costing them in the end if they don't do it right. And so they try, yeah? And granted, sometimes they try so hard and they win so well at the, their, at the little games involved that they find ways to screw people out of money or dodge whatever else. But that tends to be in also the grander scheme of things... <clears throat> where they're avoiding tax and stuff like that as well in various kind of clever ways that they found loopholes. But, um, you know, they're not doing it to the little person because the little person's paycheck to them is nothing, relatively. And so, you know, why bother? But anyway, though, that's those are my thoughts on feminism. Again, to summarise, um, you know, the, the previous waves of feminism have been incredibly important, but now as we are continuing to step towards more egalitarian kind of and meritocratic measures within society and we are getting there you know it, it's it's now it's not going to be leaps and bounds now as people seem to want it to be it's going to be refining it's going to take that time just to to get down into the nitty-gritty and just kind of work out all those little pieces yeah you're not going to have these big sweeping changes that are are completely artificial because again once once they're unattended they're just going to snap they're just going to break because they're not growing by themselves to be strong and, and resilient independent things yeah and so as a result you know things like patriarchy and the cries of patriarchy or things like the gender wage gap wage gap argument which already has been debunked time and time again and breaks down under any kind of scrutiny and you can literally sit down with the numbers and work it out in a more effective way using a more effective measure to kind of demonstrate things you know, it's it's um, a case of it. Was, feminism was a really important thing in the past to get us to where we are today, with the protections that we have, with the empowerment that we can we can find in various places, both for for women and as a society as a whole. You know, compared to more historical forms. But now, do I feel this the the feminist movement that's kind of sweeping? in various places and and kind of crashing in waves against um, the rocks as it were um, do I feel that's necessary? No, I feel it's a waste of energy. What do I feel is necessary instead? Proper uh, conversive advocacy of both men men's issues and women's issues of all sorts um, as both a joint venture and independent, and independent ventures to an uncaring secular authority that's what I feel is important nowadays. Does it need to be us versus them? No, not at all. It shouldn't be because we're both with two sides of the same coin. There's no point in trying to to wipe the other one away. Do we need anything else to go along with this? Um, well, I could I could use another drink, but beside that, we need to just make sure that these daft ideas that are now being 
uh, discussed again more openly that that even Lacey Green, who's going, yes, I'm a, a, a feminist through and through, but I'm not okay with the way that these things have been happening. You know, we need to take a step back and boil all of this down and actually, you know, whether you're skeptical about why she said these things or how she wants to work with them, that's fine. It doesn't matter about her. She's an individual. But her place in the wider scheme of things and the, the place of those like her who have maybe done the same thing and kind of taken a step away from it, as with the the woman whose name escapes me who did the Red Pill docu-movie, you know, these people are the ones who are kind of showing the way and leading the way out of the us versus them into a more conversive and potentially joint and more organised kind of approach to just... Yeah, there are still problems for everyone out there. But can we artificially force them to be solved? No. They have to be developed and grown from uh, in an organic way. And they have to work, be effective. And they have to be the right person in the right place doing the right thing. And they have to be all of those things. Yeah, and It has to be about freedom and openness and stuff like that. It can't be kind of the passive aggressive nonsense that we've got so far anyway this has turned into a very long video i wasn't planning it to be quite this long but let me know what you guys think down in the comments um you know i don't feel that any movement um is particularly important or useful anymore um if it's achieved its goal and if it's not then working constructively towards either a new goal as with feminism, going first voting and land ownership and, and stuff like that, and then equal pay and equal equal rights to, to um, opportunities to work and things like that. You know, that, that was a, a fairly sensible kind of change of goal and an approach to succeeding and, and achieving that goal. But now, though, you're talking about things that make no sense. You know, the, the uh, viral video going around about the... Um, kind of all this intersectional stuff that again also doesn't make any sense um, as, a, as a kind of collection of things that people were once oppressed by and now because they were all oppressed once you can gang together against this these perceived evils that don't make any sense you know where you, that's where you get these daft videos about decolonizing science and stuff like that which makes no it's just ridiculous as a concept um and so, yeah, you know, there, there are lots of issues, but a lot of the issues are that are being brought up are imagined or they're purely to gain some kind of leverage. And it detracts from what people could actually be achieving. And that's what bothers me. That's why I wanted to make this video um, kind of as people have been asking me. Sure, you know, I can respond to each of those people individually as they're engaging me in conversation or sending me an email or whatever else. But... I wanted to make this video again because we can't like there are still problems out there there are, there is still sexism and racism people who do hold patriarchal views and people who hold like these these highly aggressive kind of matriarchal views as well there 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 are always two sides to all of these things and they're usually just as bad as one another and so again we need to sit in the middle we need to look at what's effective and we need we need to kind of sit down and talk we need to sort all this out because as I said it's two sides of the same coin. We can't really work particularly well without each other. So let's just make it work. Yeah, let's 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 ditch the silly labels and go with the um, the the people who are representing the the issues of one and the people who are representing the issues of the other as two departments of the same fucking thing, both presenting to an authority that has the ability to to do the right thing and to help people of all sorts in all ways. Yeah, simple, straightforward, easy, just requires a little bit of conversation, a little bit of cooperation and less ideology, a lot more secular approach to this, whether your ideology is uh, political or religious or whatever, which way you want to take it. You know, we need to we need to get rid of these stupid ideologies because they are, are just miring us in this crap. Anyway, as said, I'm starting to ramble again. I've talked too long already. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video at all, then please drop us a like and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.